Welcome to Love Revival. On today's episode, uh, we have the privilege again to have with us no other than John E. Thomas. Good to have you back, sir. Thank you. Yes, I'm keep on calling you sir. I'm, I know. I'm so polite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so schooled. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Yeah. And, uh, and you have so much uh, experience and revelation on the subject that we're going to talk about today. So it would be... I, I think so. <laughs> if, of course, you've been so humble right now. Um, but it, so it would be very wrong of us not to talk about this on Love Revival mm -hmm. since we have you on. And uh, as a scriptural reference, we're going to go back to uh, Acts chapter 2 mm -hmm. and we're going to read out of uh, verse 17, just as a foundation on the subject that we're going to talk about. Yeah. And it's the prophet of Joel, and it's Peter speaking on the day of Pentecost, and he's saying, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your, ma your young men shall see visions, your old men shall see dreams. And on my men servants, and on my maid servants, I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. You know, I'm a Pentecostal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a friend of Pentecost. <laughs> and every time I read this, I really feel God moving on me. Every time I'm reading this, because I'm reminded, and I'm preaching to you right now, uh, John, <laughs> I'm Go reminded ahead. that it's days. Yeah. It's not just one day in the history that we look back to yeah. and lean in onto and thank God for, but it's days. We're living in the day when he's, there's one downpour, but there's yeah. many outpourings happening. Yes. And uh, anyone that's thirsty, anyone that's hungry, anyone that opens his heart can receive a fresh baptism yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I don't believe it's just one experience, right. but you can have many infillings many. and many baptisms into different revelations, different yeah. things that God wants to do for you. Yeah. And, and I love how yeah. God keeps it all about relationship. Mm. I, I'm going to pour out my spirit, and hey, one of the things that means is we're going to start talking. Yeah. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Your young men are going to see visions. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Like there's going to be communication. It's not so that I can get a better servant so that you can do more stuff for me. No. But I'm going to pour out my spirit so we can be intimate with one another. Because I, I want this relationship. This is what his heart has been longing for from the beginning. Yeah. I love that. And, and it's, like, it's like now, the, you know, the church is birth, birthed out mm -hmm. of this. But it's like, uh, it's, it's like God wanted that all from the beginning. Yeah. When Moses were at the mountain, God was yeah. speaking to the whole people, but all of a sudden they said, it's too hard for us to listen, so we, yeah. give us a prophet, give us someone who's, who's talking to us. But now, on the day of Pentecost, it's the same day. Yes. It's the same day when the law was given on, on uh, uh, tablets of stone. Mm -hmm. But now, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, the, 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 the righteousness and the very nature of God is now coming over and yeah. into the people. And yeah. all of a sudden the word that was outside is now coming on the inside. Yeah. That's the same day of Pentecost. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and I love also, um, I mean, I love also the new covenant, which this is included in, mm. that God is saying, no longer shall a brother teach a brother, or no, you don't yeah. need a teacher, but ev all shall know me, yes. from your young man to your old people. Yes. Everyone shall know me intimately. Yeah. And that's what the spirit of prophecy is all about. Right. Yeah. Take, because... us, take us into the whole paradigm of God speaking to us, and then go into your subject of, of God mm. using dreams, dreams. that mm. many people all over the world is familiar with that you have dreams mm. while you're sleeping or awake. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me start with what you just said, because no longer will, will each person say, oh, here, come, let me teach you. But everybody is going to know me for themselves. And that word, know, it's an experience. 
Because what would happen is, is that the Torah was available in, in the Old Covenant. So yeah, everybody could have learned. It wasn't about information that they were talking about, but not everybody had encounters with God. The, the priests would get to go into the, the temple, into the tabernacle, and they would have encounters with God, and they would come out and they would tell the people, and they'd say, this is what God was, is like, this is what he's like, this is what the law says, this is what he's like. And they would bring those things together, but not everybody had that experience. But now, every single one, we are now the tabernacle. Mm. We're now the temple. We, we carry that presence, and so we all have our own encounters for that, and, and, and that's one of the things that I, I, I long for us to get as more than just information in the head, that it would go deep in our hearts, because sometimes I think, when, especially when we get around the charismatic things, and I'm gonna talk about dreams, we, we get around these encounters, these experiences with God, people wanna live off of somebody else's encounter. Hmm. Yeah. But God's saying, no, 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 I, I wanna give you your own encounter. And so as we begin to talk about these, I'm praying, one, that you guys, you don't listen to this and say, oh, wow, um, John has this experience or this person has this experience or it talks about this in the Bible, but your heart would say, now this is what my God is like. I want to encounter him like that because that's what he wants. He, he wants that personal encounter. Hmm. And, and part of the, the, I'm going to pour out my spirit, sons and daughters will prophesy, young men see visions, old men will dream dreams, that the norm it is God encountering people, and when God encounters people, He speaks to them in all kinds of ways. Hmm. Prophecy, dreams, and visions. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6, Moses is coming with Aaron and Miriam to the tabernacle, and God comes and He speaks to Aaron and Miriam, and He goes, hey, if there's a prophet among you, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to speak to him in a dream. I'm going to reveal myself in a vision but not with my servant Moses. Him I'm speaking face to face. But the norm for me to encounter and speak to somebody is through dreams and visions. Yeah. And we've kind of gotten away from that understanding in the modern era. And we've allowed science and we've allowed our fear of things that we can't control, that we can't repeat by our own selves, that we can't um, prove by scientific method, and it's caused us to doubt the things that are clear in Scripture. Uh, about a hundred years ago, one of the, one of the Bible dictionaries uh, that was real popular in seminaries, mm -hmm. it, it had this to say about dreams and visions. It says to, to believe that you could receive knowledge by way of extrasensory perception, such as dreams and visions, is foolish or, or dangerous. Now, mm. that, that's a Bible dictionary. It makes me wonder which Bible that they were looking at. <laughs> but yeah. but it, it lets us know something. Mm. Every single one of us, when we look at the Bible, we, we don't see what it says. We see what we think it says. Mm. And the process of discipleship is inviting God to remove those lenses so that we actually see the Bible for what it says mm. because we're seeing it through a lens. You, you go through scripture and, and some, some, some of the people that are listening, they're, they're going to read the, the scripture. They're going to start seeing dreams in places they didn't even realize it was there because that's what happened to me. I started learning about dreams and all of a sudden I'm going through scripture and they're everywhere. Yep. And Abraham, we're, we're told Abraham is the father of faith. The promise that he was given, uh, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. I'm going to, out of your seed, I'm going to bless all the nations of the earth. I'm going to give you descendants. I'm going to give you this land. That promise in Genesis 15, that covenant that was given to Abraham, that's the foundation of the Mosaic covenant, which is the foundation of the Messianic covenant that we stand on. Yeah. That covenant was given to Abraham in a dream. Hmm. Most people don't realize that. Um. They, they, they think, well, you know, God was probably just standing there talking to him. I mean, he, he came and he sat down and had meals with Abraham. So that's probably what happened. But it says very clearly in Genesis 15, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham and then God spoke. Hmm. 
And, and you go on Jacob, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, he, he gets the same promise in a dream. One of the most famous dreams in Genesis 28, he's at Bethel and, and he comes to this place and he lays down, goes to sleep. He has this encounter. He's seeing angels ascending and descending. And God stands there and says, hey, by the way, I'm your God. I'm going to bring you back to this land. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to give nations through your descendants. And, and you're going to have this place. And, and I'm going to be with you. This is my promise. And, and Jacob wakes up and he says, wow, that was a dream. God must be in this place. And that gives us another interesting key. Because when we have a dream, we don't often think that God is in this place. We think something happened inside of our head. But, but biblically, dreams are bigger than us. Now, I, I will have to say this. Not every dream is from God. Hmm. Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah is confronting the false prophets of his day. And he says, you guys, you have dreams that you have caused yourself to dream. Hmm. So we can actually cause our own dreams. So there are dreams. It's just stuff that's going on inside. Take yeah. us through take us through the different kind of dreams a person can have you yeah. have uh, you know you, you you have as you you already said the the dreams that your heart causes you to dream mm -hmm. if you back it up there's okay. also other natural ways of your brain probably you know working through issues your worries mm -hmm. or or things that you're asking yeah. you're, you're longing for could be you know yeah, worked out in, in the dream state, but then you have, and I, I don't want to go through the mm -hmm. different, but you have probably yeah, yeah. have a chart of. Yeah, well, there's three basic sources of mm -hmm. dreams. I mean, you can have dreams from God, you can have dreams from the enemy, mm -hmm. or you can have dreams from yourself. Yeah. So dreams from God, um, they're, they're not always as clear as we think. We think if we're having a dream from God, it'll be obvious, we'll know that it's God. Mm -hmm. But I, I've... I've interpreted tens of thousands of dreams. I, I lost count. I really don't know how many I've interpreted, but, but well over 10,000 dreams. And that's a um, conservative estimate. Hmm. And again and again, I find, oh, I don't know if this dream means anything, um, but this is my dream. And it's a clear message from God. I've seen that again and again. So we have mm -hmm. to really ask God about our dreams, not just assume that we're going to know whether or not it's from God. Um, so dreams from God, dreams from the enemy, those are usually obvious. Usually they're, they're, they're fear-based, there's, there's really bad things going on, there's danger, there's intimidation, mm -hmm. um, nightmares are often dreams from the enemy, or, or it's just dark, it, it's light, because the enemy dwells in darkness, mm -hmm. and you know we, we walk in the light, we don't walk in the dark, Jesus said, and so the dreams from the enemy, they're often dark. But the dreams from ourselves, now that, that's actually coming out of our soul. And the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. What you think, what you want, what you feel. So if you continually are thinking about something, mm -hmm. you'll probably dream about it. Not because necessarily God is speaking about it, but because you're thinking about it. Or if you want something, we, we do these outreaches and we've done outreaches at, at Sundance Film Festival, we've done them at South by Southwest, uh, film festival, music festival, and, and in both of those places, one of the more common types of dreams that we get is somebody that's had a dream that they're going to get discovered and they're the next big thing. They're the next big movie star, they're the next big country music star, they're, you know, they get discovered and they're the next big thing. And, and the answer is the same. This is, well, you know, that, no, not every single time, because there are actually, God will make those promises, but, but that dream, you're having that dream because this is something you desperately want. Mm. Yeah, that's what I want more than anything. Mm. Well, and that's the reason you're dreaming about it. You want it so much you're causing yourself to dream about it. And so we have to be aware if we have a dream and everything in the dream, or not everything in the dream, but that sense of the dream is, man, I knew that. Oh, I've been wanting that. Oh, I've been feeling that. Mm -hmm. It's probably our own soul. Mm -hmm. that's giving us that dream. Yeah. And so we have to be careful because I, I've met lots of people that they begin to put a high value on dreams because they saw it in scripture, but they didn't understand this. 
And so they were wanting things and they started to think it was a promise from God. Exactly. And then they were disappointed and, and they, were, they were confused thinking mm. that, that either God didn't speak or, or that God was lying to them exactly. because their dreams didn't come to pass. But it was really them causing themselves to dream it. Mm. Yeah. So we, we talked about out of Acts chapter 2 that initially when, when the church was birthed, by the Spirit of God coming to the earth, it was visions and dreams amplified, the yeah. prophetic utterances, the yeah. revelatory realm, and God wants to speak to us. Yes. And we see all through the Bible, even the Old Testament, but even the New Testament, even more amplified that uh-huh. God speaks to individuals through dreams. Yeah. Uh, would you say that He uh, speaks to unbelievers as well? I, I definitely would. Yeah. And I'll give you biblical, but then some personal experience on that. Mm -hmm. Um, Pharaoh is not a believer, and he has very clear dreams where God tells him the future. The baker and the cupbearer that -hmm. Joseph interprets, neither one of those are believers, and yet they have very clear dreams that are from God. The Midianite soldier that Gideon overhears is not a believer, and yet he has a dream that's clearly prophetic, that's saying what God wants. Nebuchadnezzar, mm-hmm. uh, we could keep on yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Let's, just, let's stop there because yeah. you've mentioned a lot of uh, uh, people in government, people with influence in mm-hmm. the Bible that God speaks to that rules and reigns yeah. over a geographical area or a people. Would you think, or do you have any experiences or heard of leaders within the church and without the church, government, people maybe having dreams? Maybe God is uh-huh. speaking to people with influence. Yeah to make right choices as Pharaoh when it came to providing in the good years to, yeah. so it would last in the bad years. Well, and, and the principle is this, that God wants to help you to be effective with what he's put in your authority. Mm-hmm. So if you have authority over your family, he's probably going to talk to your family. If you have authority over your business, he's going to talk about your business. If you have authority over a nation, mm-hmm. he's probably going to talk about your nation. If you have authority over your church, he's probably going to talk to, to you about your church. He's going to help you understand what his will is for what you have authority over. Because whatever you have authority over, mm-hmm. it's a stewardship that's been given by God. And so your role, whoever... That, that authority is, the role is to be faithful to God's plan for that thing, not to figure out your own plan for it. Mm. And so God speaks about it. But I mean, I, I could use a, a couple of the famous US presidents. Mm-hmm. Um, George Washington had an encounter that is written down, you can look up George Washington's vision or George Washington's dream, mm-hmm. where he was taken into this encounter and he was shown what was gonna happen to the United States of America, it showed the end of the Revolutionary War, it showed the Civil War, um, Mm -hmm. it showed the First World War. Like there was some major things of what was gonna be happening in the future of America in that dream. When you say encounter for people that are watching right now, you're talking about that George Washington had an experience with God. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring bring us up to this. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I I use the the word encounter when I'm not Mm -hmm. quite sure what category to put it in. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. course. (laughs) Was it a dream? Was it a vision? But somehow God (laughs) came and met this person and and they came away with it. But um, Abraham Lincoln, another Mm -hmm. famous Mm -hmm. U.S. president, Mm -hmm. this is in his journal. Uh, He wrote this down 10 days before he died. Mm -hmm. He he goes, I I, I woke Mm -hmm. up in my dream and I was walking through the White House because I could hear people mourning and crying as if their hearts were about to break, but I could not find the source of the sound. I go into room after room and they were all open. And finally I go into the east wing of the house. And when I go into the east wing, I open up a door and I find the source of this great sorrow. Mm -hmm. There are many people there and they're all in mourning and in the center of the room there's a casket with a body there and so i go up to one of the the secret service one of the the guards that are there i'm using my own language but i'm kind of using his his but it's in his journal Mm -hmm. um and i ask him who has died why is everybody mourning and and the guard says sir have you not heard the president was assassinated and i woke up 
I mean, it just shot him awake when he had that experience. Hmm. Now, this is 10 days before that exact dream. He just wrote it down in his journal. Every bit of it happened. Hmm. 10 days later, he was assassinated and he was in that room that he saw in that dream hmm. and everybody was mourning over his death and that assassination. So you, you see well, that's, that. Was that God way, God's way of, of uh, uh, preparing him? I, I, would, or, or, I would assume that there was, there was some type of preparation because there's or nothing... Or could he prayed it out, right? Prayed himself out of the way? I mean, yeah. sometimes we talk about prophecy that, you know, God comes with judgment. If you do not repent, this will happen or whatever. But right. then when you repent, things happen. Your, your life is prolonged. Or, yeah. I mean, we see that in the Bible. Yeah, That, that prophecy can change. Prophecy yeah. can change your heart and then the destiny changes or... Yeah. I don't want I mean, you to, to tell, tell me because yeah, it's I mean, I, hard I to have the answer to that. But Yeah, in that particular situation, I, I'm not sure. But usually when you have a dream where you can change what's going to happen, like God's inviting you to do something, hmm. you'll get right to the end and right before whatever happens, happens. It'll be like, and I was about to or the car almost hit me and you wake up right before it happens. Mm. And it's, it kind of leaves that cliffhanger feeling okay. of the dream. Yeah. And usually that says that this is something that you're in and that the end has not been determined yet. And so mm. you, can, you can still make a choice. Now that, that, that's not the only way mm -hmm. um, because I've also had you know, people have had dreams that this was going to happen, mm -hmm. but they woke up with the sense that they needed to pray and they prayed and it didn't happen. Hmm. And so God loves to give us warnings so that we can use our authority to stop things from happening. Hmm. Uh, there are times when we can't stop them. Hmm. Um, uh, Jeremiah, he's, he's getting these, these prophecies about the, the destruction that's coming to Jerusalem. And, and he was doing exactly what you should. He began to pray, oh God, no, oh God, no, oh God, no. And God stops him and says, Jeremiah, don't pray about this situation anymore. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to change. This is going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And, and there will be times, but if God hasn't clearly said, don't pray, mm -hmm. you always assume you're supposed to pray. Mm -hmm. Because I think it was Amos where he was showed, I'm pretty sure it was Amos. It was one of the minor prophets for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was shown what was going to happen. He's shown all these locusts that are going to come, on, mm -hmm. come in and destroy all the crops of Israel. And, and he begins to cry out, oh God, no, Israel is so small. How could they stand? And, and then God says, okay, yeah, I won't do that. And then he shows him something else, this destruction that's coming. And he's like, oh no, oh God, no, please. How could Israel stand? They're so small. They can't handle it. And he goes, okay, yeah, I won't do that either. Mm -hmm. And then he shows him the vision of the plumb line. So yeah, I actually remember now it was Amos for sure because he gets that vision of the plumb line. I'm going to put a plumb line. In the nation of Israel, a standard of righteousness that everything must line up to. And that one didn't get changed. Hmm. That, was, that was the firm will of the Lord. But that heart, because Ezekiel, he's shown all these things of, of what God's going to be doing. And at one point, God comes to Ezekiel and says, Ezekiel, I was looking for one that would stand in the gap and that would pray that the destruction would not come to Israel. Hmm. I couldn't find him. Oh. I couldn't find anybody that would pray. And it was almost a rebuke. Mm -hmm. It's like, you, you knew, I've told you what was going to come. Why didn't you ask me to not do it? And that, that's, that's the heart that we have to have. When we see something that is, is a negative thing, if it's from the enemy, then we pray that it stops. If it's from God, then we need to pray, oh God, please change. You know, yeah. hey, I'm going to go to Sodom and Gomorrah and, and I'm going to destroy him. Mm -hmm. Well, but God, if, if there's 50, oh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, if there's 50, I won't. For, 45? 40? 35? Mm -hmm. 10? Yeah, for 10, I won't, I won't do it. You know, Moses, you know, hey, get out of my way. I'm going to wipe out the whole nation. I'm going to start over. I'm going to make a brand new nation. You're going to be... I can fulfill everything because you're the seed of Abraham, you're the seed of Isaac, you're the seed of Jacob. 
still accomplishes everything I said I'm going to do. So I'm going to just destroy them all. We'll start over with you, Moses. And Moses begins to cry, oh God, no, no, please don't, don't. Just wipe my name out from the book of life, but let your people, please don't, don't destroy your people. And God says, yeah, okay, I won't destroy them because you have cried out. And that's the heart that we want to have because God wants to show us what's coming. He wants to show us what's going on. He's done it throughout all history. Hmm. And he'll use dreams and he'll use visions and he speaks to his people. Hmm. But we need to respond with the same heart that he has, that heart of mercy, that heart of kindness, that heart of love. Yeah. So we have started to touch on the subject of visions and dreams. And uh, we have John Thomas with us for you that are maybe are watching us late. I want you to know that uh, you can get John's resources on Streams Ministries International. Google it, go to the webpage and there he has plenty of resources to take part of getting, getting you more wise, street smart when yes. it comes to visions and dreams. Uh, so stay tuned and be have your eyes open for more episodes of Love Revival. We're going to elaborate even more on dreams and visions. God bless you and have